Hey everyone, Ryan here with Airs Tech. Today we're going to take a look at the just released updated exams for the CCENT or ICND1 and CCNA or ICND2. Cisco released these on the 17th and they will be replacing the V2 exams. These are now V3. They have added, removed, and moved some things around between the two exams. In this video, we're going to take a look at all of those items. We will take a look at what to do if you've already been studying for the old exams. Cisco will give you a little bit of leeway in uh, time to complete those exams. And we will also take a look at what the new exam numbers are. Let's start with what everybody typically panics over first, and that is, I've been studying for the old exams, Cisco has just released the updated blueprints, can I still take the old exam? The answer for right now, as of this recording, is yes. Cisco is giving you, until August 20th, 2016, for the ICND-1 100 101 exam, the V2, and for the CCNA composite, the 200 120 exam. If you were working towards your CCNA, maybe you already have ICND 1 and you're working towards ICND 2, the 200 101 exam, on that one you have a little bit more time. You have until September 24th, 2016. So, if you've been perhaps uh, dragging your feet a little bit and don't want to take on all the new material, don't want to have to uh, perhaps have wasted some studies on things that have been removed or have to pick up new topics that have been added, I would suggest you get to it. Get it done sooner rather than later. That way, in the event, hopefully not, but in the event that you miss a uh, passing score on an exam, you have a little bit of time left. Another question I've seen frequently with previous exam updates is, can I mix exams? Or in other words, maybe you've already passed the version 2 ICND-1 and you, for whatever reason, aren't going to be able to take and successfully pass the version 2 ICND-2 before that deadline? The answer to this is yes, you can mix the exams. You can use a version 2 ICND-1 or CSENT with a version 3 ICND-2 and still come out with your CCNA. So there's no problem there. You obviously just need to study the new material for the version 3 of the ICND-2 to make sure that you know everything that's on the new exam. The last thing to look at before we look at what was added or removed from the exam are the new exam numbers. So, if you've been studying for a while, you may know that the ICND-1 version 2 was the 100-101 exam. That is now going to be the 100-105 in version 3. Version 2 of the ICND-2 exam was 200 101. That is now 200 105. And the composite CCNA exam or the one exam route was previously 200 120. The new exam number is 200 125. So basically, they just changed the last number of all of the exams to a five. The rest of the numbers stayed the same. So if you're booking for new exams, just be careful. Make sure you're booking for the correct exam number. And now let's take a look at what was added, removed, and changed. We'll start with what was removed here. And I'll start with the question on everybody's mind. Frame relay. Yes, frame relay has finally been removed from the CCNA. Many people felt that frame relay shouldn't have been included in the last revision of the CCNA as it's an older technology now, and so I would suspect that this change, removing frame relay in this revision, is going to make a lot of people happy. 
I would have to say that I kind of figured that this would have been removed in this revision. There were a few other uh, WAN technologies that were also removed. Uh, the discussion of cellular, which was the 3G and 4G. Uh, there was VSAT, DSL, and E1 and T1. They have all been removed, as well as ISDN. The next item that was removed, or the next two items, I should say, that were removed, were VRRP and GLBP. They were both removed. They did, however, leave one first hop redundancy protocol, and that was HSRP. That still remains on the uh, new version of CCNA. Two more items we saw removed with the revision were bridges and hubs which again, realistically, probably could have been removed in a prior revision, but they are now gone. Dual stack, which is a means of cross-compatibility between IPv4 and IPv6, was removed, and this was, I believe Cisco stated, due to the uh, many ways that you can create that compatibility. They didn't want to, I guess, focus on just one. And they also removed CEF, or Cisco Express Forwarding. So with all of these items removed, what did Cisco add to take their place? Well, first, they now expect you to have some understanding of the impact on a network that a firewall, access point, and a wireless controller will have. They expect a more extensive understanding of VPN. They've now added DM VPN or distributed multi-point VPN. They have now added that we should have some understanding of cloud infrastructure, how that can affect our network. We now need to know OSPF v3 and EIGRP v6, which are the IPv6 versions of those protocols. They've also added Anycast as an IPv6 address type. Link Layer Discovery Protocol, or LLDP, has been added. This is similar to Cisco Discovery Protocol, or CDP. The only real difference is that this one is more of an industry standard. It's not Cisco proprietary. Something I found very interesting... They've added RIP v2. Now, that is the IPv4 version. They did not add RIP ng, which is the IPv6 version. However, they're now using RIP in the ICND1 to familiarize the candidates with routing protocols. They're no longer using OSPF in ICND1. All OSPF topics have now been moved into ICND2. And along with that, they have also added where we now need to be able to configure multi-area OSPF, which personally I don't really see as that big of a change. That's not all that difficult to do a basic multi-area OSPF configuration. Cisco has also added that we should have a knowledge of collapsed core network architecture, which is basically the combination of the core and distribution layers in our network. These next two really stood out to me, and they are Software Defined Networking, or SDN. There's a requirement for some knowledge of that now. I won't get into the details here, though. And the last one is BGP. They have brought a small amount of BGP down to the CCNA level. That's a change from the past where BGP has typically been at the CCNP level and higher. There were, of course, other additions. I'm not going to go through all of them here due to time. Of course, you can also always go through the exam blueprints from Cisco themselves and see exactly what has either disappeared or shown up in the new version of the exam. So... I really hope that this video was helpful for you. I want to wish you the best of luck in your studies moving forward. And I would ask that you subscribe to the channel here or subscribe to the email newsletter 
through airstech.com to keep up with future videos.